play some online poker because you all were stuck at home and wanted to see me play some online poker. Well, streaming is not in the cards for me because, well, I have two kids and a wife and I don't get to play all that much anyway if I ever was going to get to play. Hmm. But what is in the cards is me getting to play random Sundays now. So I've made a deal with my wife. I'll get to play high value Sunday tournaments and with any luck, we'll win something. Um, obviously, that entails playing on some crappy sites that I would not otherwise want to play on. But hey, to get some content for you all, I'm happy to do it. If you're watching on Instagram or listening on iTunes, recognize this may not be the best experience for you because, uh, well, you need video. On Instagram, I'm going to try showing my screen. That's what's happening right here. Um, to the best of my ability, I realize it's not the ideal experience. So head over to youtube.com slash poker coaching. If you want to see the replay of this, that will be available there. Also, um, this content will be available. For, well, I'll probably review this entire hand history for the members of Poker Coaching at some point in the near future. So I took second place in a $150 tournament. Not a big buy-in game. Um, I think I, it was a small field tournament. I think it had like 200 people. So I think I got $4,000 or something like that for this cash. At the end of the day, I think we roughly broke even because uh, that's how it goes. But um, I have no clue what happened in this tournament because I was 20 tabling the whole time. Probably not the ideal way to start your... Um, online poker career from home, <laughs> but it is what it is. All right, so let's take a look at this hand history. First things first, very first hand of the tournament. Notice I bought in very late. We started with 10,000 chips and someone raised to 1,200 from the low jack seat and I had ace, 10 of clubs in the high jack. This is a very easy all in in this scenario. We have super easy shove. We are gonna be shoving this literally every time and we are thrilled. Our opponent folds, so great. I'm going to be skipping all the hands that don't seem to have obvious action because I want to get through some relevant hands for you all today. All right, so here we have a raise to 1,600, 200 chips. Mash the mic button. Is this working? Are we working today? I think everything's working today. Oh, you mashed the like button. You all say the mic button. There's actually a button on the microphone right here that turns it on and off. We don't want to turn off the microphone. Um, so anyway, here we have a raise to 1600 from the hijack seat. Same guy as before who raised and then folded to the jam. And we have queen 10 of clubs in the cutoff seat. I think jamming is probably just going to be the right play in these scenarios. You have to realize when you buy in late to a tournament with something like 15 or 20 big blinds, you really are just trying to make something happen. So this is a situation where... I think all in is probably going to be ideal. Realize you're going to be roughly flipping for the first buy in. Maybe even, you know, if you double up, you're still going to be flipping for the second buy in, depending on how late you buy in. You may say, why buy in late in the first place? Well, I knew I got to start at exactly uh, 2.50 p.m., I think, 2.50 p.m., 1.50 p.m., something like that. And I wanted to load up as many games as I possibly could to get some volume in. So here we are. Easy all in, in my opinion. We do jam, get called by. Pocket nines, and we lose. Okay, we re-enter. That's fine. Very first hand back. Facing a raise from the low jack seat, or button cut from the high jack seat to 1,600. We have king nine offsuit in the big blind with 10,000 chips. So the opponent min raise, I have 15 big blinds. I think jamming is probably fine in this scenario, but calling is also great too. I'm a pretty big fan of calling in this scenario and seeing what happens given we're getting amazing pot odds. We completely missed the flop. Queen, seven, Five, check, check, turns to 10, check, check. I'm just not going to bluff at this. I'm just giving the opponent the pot. Probably has a whole lot of marginal made hands right there, and there's no point in getting involved against a whole lot of marginal made hands. Down to nine big blinds. It's not where you want to be, but it's where you are sometimes. Facing a min raise from the low jack seat. Easy all in from the cutoff with pocket threes. We are going to get called a ton. We're going to be flipping a ton. If we lose, we rebuy again. This time we won the flip. We beat queen jack offsuit. All right. So now, 38 hands into the tournament, we have now, again, only 20 big blinds. So we've chipped up a little bit from our 10,000 starting stack, but we're currently just hanging out. Whenever you double up, don't think you're all of a sudden going to start winning the tournament immediately, right? You have to win a lot of hands to win the poker tournament. Also, if you all like this format, let me know in the comments section. Click like, click subscribe. If you're listening to this on the uh, on Audible or on Audible, not on Audible, that's where you get my audiobooks. If you want my audiobooks for free, if you never sign up for Audible, go to jonathanlittlepoker.com slash free, and Audible will give you one of them for free if you sign up. Um, if you're listening on iTunes, Stitcher, 
wherever you're listening. I personally listen on Overcast. They have a good speed feature that I enjoy. Um, if you're listening to this, let me know what you think about the format. I know we're going a little bit fast. So um, it is what it is. And I realize you may not have the video. If you don't have the video, again, check out poker co- or youtube.com slash poker coaching. You must fold way more hands than you play. Uh, yeah, well, we see my stats here for, I guess, is that in the recent past, 24-15? This is probably even a little bit loose, if I had to guess. But whatever, we like playing We like playing loosely. All right, so here folds to me in the small blind with pocket twos. I have two options here. I can either jam, and I think open jamming for 20 big blinds is perfectly fine. But I think limping is probably okay, too. Uh, I was probably messing up this scenario. Notice my opponent in this scenario has 12 big blinds. This is actually just an easy all-in preflop. Um... Again, this is what happens when you play 20 tables at a time. You inevitably miss stuff. When I had it 20 tabling, I had multiple like cascades of games across my computer screen. So this is a very clear example of just screwing up based on not understanding the big blind. Also, on this specific site, I did not realize for quite a while you could change it to display big blinds as opposed to chips because that makes life a million times easier. So um, this is a scenario where this is an easy all-in preflop. Instead, I decided to limp, planning to limp jam, went very deep. Whenever you limp jam, you limp, the guy's going to raise sometimes, then you get to jam him off a lot of hands that have equity. Um, as opposed to just open jamming for 20 big blinds, yeah, you win the pot a lot, but whenever you do get called, you're usually in terrible shape. Here, I limp, guy raises, and stick to the limp jam plan. He does call, and we beat ace king. So just like that, we now have two and a half starting stacks, and we get to perhaps play a little bit of poker. Looks like we chipped up a little bit more. And now we're facing an under-the-gun limp and a low-jack call. So we're playing roughly 30 big blinds deep on the button with 10-7 of spades. So take a second. Ask yourself what you do in this scenario. In this spot, I think calling is by far the best play. I do not want to raise and get re-raised. That would be terrible. I don't really want to fold this hand flops pretty well. Even with a 30 big blind stack, this is certainly an acceptable spot to call. So we do call. Flop comes queen 10 10. That's good. So we have trips. We have the literal trips. They all check to me. Again, take your, take a second and ask yourself what you do with 10 7 of spades on queen of hearts, 10 of hearts, 10 of diamonds. Well, in this spot, we definitely want to bet. It is very, very easy for the opponents to have straight draws, gut shots, like gut shot straight draws, flush draws, a pair of queens, right? They could have a queen in their hand. They could have hands like. Pocket sixes that are just going to fold if I bet, but if they get a six on the turn, obviously that's terrible for me. So this is a spot where I definitely want to be betting, and I think we need to bet. It's like medium. Probably like half pot's fine. I go slightly bigger than half pot. That's fine. And we get two callers. The big blind called and the hijack called. So now, when we get called by both players, we have to assume the big blind has all sorts of stuff. We have to assume the overcaller in this scenario has mostly hands like a queen or perhaps some weird slow play or perhaps with some decent draw like ace of hearts. Some of you are saying we should pot it here. I'm not a big fan of potting it here because when we pot it and get called, now we're going to be against mostly like good queens and tens and like premium draws. And this 10-7 actually doesn't do so well against the range of queens, which we crush, tens, which we mostly lose to and premium draws, which have plenty of equity. So I think in this scenario, you want to bet smaller to keep your opponents in with a wider range. Turn to four. They check to me. And do we bet again? At this point, we have 1.5 times pot left on the turn. I think this is a spot where a lot of people make a big error of jamming. Let's see if Instagram can still see this. I think they can. I have no clue what this Instagram experience is today. If you're watching on Instagram, it may be better to go to youtube.com slash poker coaching. Um, in this scenario... On queen 10, 10, 4, if we jam, we're probably going to get called by only 10s or mostly 10s. And against the 10s, we're actually in pretty bad shape. So I don't think we can jam. But at the same time, I don't really want to bet small because if I bet small, we're giving the draws all great odds to call. This might actually, I don't even know what I did in this scenario. This is actually a pretty tough spot, I think. It's probably close between checking and betting medium-ish. I did go small, though, and I don't like small. I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with small. I'd rather bet small than bet giant, that's for sure. But I think I'd probably rather just bet like 8K or 9K or 10K in this scenario. 
because that's going to give the draws not such great odds. When I bet 6K, yeah, we're going to keep the queens in, which is great, but we also are keeping the draws in, which is not so great. To be fair, I know which draws are pretty bad for me, so it's not like I have to worry about that too much. We get check jammed on by the big blind, which is, um, well, perhaps good or bad. You all take a second. Think about this. Do we have our re-entering shoes on again? In this scenario, we have a very, very easy call when we get check shoved on for our you know, 20, 25 big blind stack remaining. At this point, we beat all the queens that the opponent could be playing very poorly. Isn't this the under the gun limper? Ooh, it might be. Let's go back. Oh, this is the under the gun limper, not the big blind. My bad. It is the under the gun limper. Ha, that changes things. Good read, Tika. So yeah, I'm still just calling. It's so easy for this guy to be doing something dumb. Obviously, he could just have like pocket queens. He could have pocket 10, or he could have pocket fours randomly. He could have um, ace 10, king 10. But we're very, very happy calling in this scenario. We, we beat the vast majority of hands. When you have trips, you block the trips for your opponent. And especially on this site, you're going to find a lot of these sites that cater to Americans have a lot of bad players. Um, I mean, really, I was convinced to play these by my newest poker coach and coach, James Romero, who basically told me the games are super soft. And the opponents are very, 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 very bad. And, um, well, let's see what he has. River is a jack, so we probably lose. We lose to basically everything on a river jack. Uh, but he has pocket aces, so this guy just doesn't know how to play poker very well. So that's good. I think the opponent played his hand quite poorly. What should he have done? Well, he should have raised preflop. Um... On the flop, he probably should have just made a small bet. Once it goes check, bet, call, call, I think on the turn, when I bet again, the guy probably just needs to fold. As crappy as that is, I mean, that's what happens when you slow play the aces. Sometimes you have to be able to get away from it. Kevin says they get really, really, really lucky. I mean, you have to understand that whenever your opponents get the money in poorly, they are going to have to get lucky, right? You're going to find that the tight players, the nitty players, never or rarely get lucky because they get their money in good the majority of the time. What side is this? I'm not going to promote this site in any way whatsoever by saying what name it is. Because that would be unethical in my opinion. Um, I would tell you that you should not play on any of these sites. At least don't keep money on it that you are unwilling to lose. I think I have something like 5k on the site, which is just and barely enough to play one day. So um, if the site goes down, I lose one day worth of, uh, worth of action, which, you know, it's not ideal. I'd rather not lose 5k, but... At the same time, it's probably good to um, get volume in and especially get some content for all of you. Normally, I'm out there playing live poker a decent amount so I can get content that way for all of you. And I get to play exactly the games I want to play. I don't really want to be playing random $150 buy-in tournaments where first place is 5000 bucks, But it is what it is. I'm happy to do it now since we're stuck at home for a while. All right, here we have 9 eight of spades in the big blind facing a min raise from a 22 big blind stack. From the hijack seat, we have an easy call with the 9 eight of spades. Flop comes 10, 8, 6, giving me a gut shot in middle pair. Two diamonds on the flop. I do not have diamonds. Check, check. Turns an ace. That's a terrible card for me. Check. Opponent now bets two-thirds pot. It's a pretty bad spot, but I think we need to call here. Obviously, this is a scenario where the opponent could have a whole lot of um, aces, but they could also just be bluffing with stuff like queen, jack. They didn't bet the flop. They could just be bluffing with any unpaired hand. That said... This is not a good scenario. I think folding is certainly viable, but if you all know me, I don't really fold all that often. Notice if we get an 8 or a 7, we're just very, very happy. Um, River goes check, check, and we lose to ace 9. That's fine. Ray says, so you play 5k a day when you play online. On this site, I believe there are three sites that Americans can play on, so we have 15k-ish in action each day, each Sunday at least, roughly. Maybe more. I mean, what I've pretty much decided to do is I'm going to play all of the large field tournaments with buy-in between $50 and about $500, unless it's an obvious main event. Um, so that's that. Can you play on PokerStars? I'm within America, so no. I could go to New Jersey and play on PokerStars. Can you beat two five cash game on PokerStars? Probably the non-Zoom tables. The Zoom tables, almost certainly not. The regular tables, well, I know I've played that a decent amount on Party Poker, and I've done quite well on them, so... Not the zoom tables, because everybody in those games is great. The slow tables, probably. Here we limp small blind with ace-king offsuit. I think that's perfectly fine. Big blind checks. We're just going to bet medium on the ace-queen-nine flop. Opponent folds. Nothing to see there. Obviously, I didn't know this guy was playing zero slash zero. Maybe this guy just bought in and decided to not play or something. Um, all right, here we have pocket aces. That's good. We raise. 
Ira Glass in the big blind decides to jam on us, so we have an easy call with the aces. Obviously, we're thrilled about that. What is a zoom table? That's a table where as soon as you fold, it moves you to another game immediately. So you play a ton of hands per hour. And um, essentially, those games weed out the bad players very quickly because you play many, 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 many more hands per hour than a regular table. Like on a regular table, you may play 80 hands per hour. On a fast table, you may play, or may play, I don't know, 200, 300 hands per hour, something like that. So you play way more hands per hour, which makes all the bad players go broke quickly, which means that if you are not one of the absolute best players in the world playing the highest stakes games available, well, then you're not going to win much money, which is why really nobody wins much money in the 2-5 Zoom games. Zoom games, fast forward games, speed games, whatever they call them, most sites have that at this point. Pocket jacks, we make a min raise. At this point, we're playing, well, we have 50 big lines deep. We're actually in pretty great shape thanks to that aces against king queen hand. We get jammed on again by the button. Easy, easy call. So we busted Ira Glass, who has a great podcast. We're probably about to bust Tywin Lannister, who was in, uh, what's that show? Game of Thrones. Lots of lots of celebrities on this side for some reason. Um, board runs out king, queen, six, ten, king. We probably lose. We lose to everything here. Throwing at ace, queen, so we lost a flip. You all may think, oh, man, I lost a flip. I'm so angry. But realize, you're going to lose flips sometimes. That is standard, you know? Don't get too um, excited or frustrated when you lose all ends. All right, here we men raise ace-eight of spades from early position, under the gun plus two. I think this certainly could be fine to fold. You don't have to raise it, but in general, in tournaments, especially in tournaments where I think people are playing a little bit too poorly across the board, I'm usually happy, happy just to open decently wide. The only time I'm going to raise a little bit tighter in tournaments is if I expect the opponents to be jamming a ton. Um... But, like, I don't really have a reason to think the opponents are going to be jamming a ton, so we raise it up. Player in the hijack seat calls and the small blind calls. We have ace-eight of spades. Flop comes ten set. I'm sorry, ten. What am I saying? Flop comes seven, five, four, two clubs. I have ace-eight of spades, so we have a gut shot. Um, I decide to check the flop. This is pretty great for the big blind. I really don't want to get check raised here. I'd rather just check and realize my equity. If we check it now, we win a decent amount of the time. So seven, five, four, check, check, check. Turns a four, check, 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 rivers an eight. I don't think we can value bet here. We lose to any six, and it's pretty easy for either player to have a six. Um, they can also have clubs, back door, our front door clubs get there, so we're just going to fold. And we win. Be interesting to know if the ace high was just good there. Probably was just good. Losing flips means nothing unless you bust. If you have chips, you need to move on immediately. That's for sure. I mean, even if you bust, who cares, right? I mean, just re-enter. Yeah, Evan says it's on ACR. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, don't tell anyone that we're playing on the sites. I mean, to be fair, like I told you, there's only three reasonable sites. There's Bovada slash Ignition, Global, and ACR. These are the best of the sites operating within America. Like I told you, I do not vouch for these sites at all. I would tell you if you care about money, not to put any money on these sites because they might go down at any point in time. That said, I don't care about money all that much. I mean, you all know that. I give away money all the time to all of you. I think we gave away $3,000 just last month just to help all of you out. And, um, you know, I'm happy to happy to splash around. And if you all tell me you want me to get content playing these games, I'm happy to splash around, spend half a day once a week playing, and, you know, maybe we win. Funny enough, uh, one of my, I, I convinced two or three of my other friends to play. And one of my friends who played um, for the first time in, like, six months, he took s second or third place in the big tournament on this site this weekend for 130K. So now his problem is, how do I get 130K off the site immediately? How do I get 130k off the site immediately? <laughs> I don't have that problem yet. Um, maybe I will soon enough. So anyway, games are good. Facing a min raise with a king four diamonds and small blind, we'll just fold. We'll fast forward till we find another reasonable hand. Here we have ace queen. We min raise it up on the cutoff seat, which is perfectly fine. And now we have a 20 big blind jam from the small blind. Ask yourself, what do you do in this scenario? Well, this is a very, very easy call. With ace-queen, we are basically always calling after we raise for 20 big blinds. I'm trying to think if there's ever a scenario I'm folding. Like, if I raise under the gun and the nitty player jams, I guess I would fold. Um, I, I, I mean, if a nitty player jams, I would fold in that spot. But here we're raising cutoff against a competent player. I mean, 33 slash 20 is pretty aggressive. So this is just a very easy call. If I had a hand like ace-10... I would probably call, if I had pocket sixes, I would call. If I had king-queen, I would probably call as well, reluctantly. 
So anyway, this is an easy call. What are the time limits for content that becomes non-usable? Depends on who makes the content and what they are discussing. People who make like exact player pool exploits today, that kind of stuff expires relatively quickly. But just like good, solid, fundamentally sound strategy is um, ideal. Everyone seems to keep saying like going to the dark side. I mean, look, I already, I always told all of you, just don't trust the sites, right? Nothing wrong with playing on a site. Just don't trust it. How many tables were we playing at one time? We were playing 20 at a time here, so obviously I wasn't paying the least bit of attention. Which is why I like playing, using the heads-up display, simple stats, nothing fancy, and um, easy call with the ace-queen. Anyway, board runs out, giving me a straight, so I'm going to win. He has the jack, nine of clubs. Ooh, so really light. I say really light. This wasn't really light, but as you see, every hand I just listed I would call with was in great shape. I obviously don't remember this at all. I want to make that clear. I don't remember this tournament in the least bit, so be aware. I may do something really dumb at some point. Here we raise queen three of clubs from the button. Same guy calls on the big blind with 12 big blind stack. Seven, six, three. We're going to make a tiny continuation bet. If he jams me here, I think it's a pretty easy call. Um, so what ha that is what happened. So I meant raise the button, queen three of clubs, which you could fold if you wanted. The player in the small blind is playing really nitty. The player in the big blind is playing active enough. He's only 12 big blinds deep. If he jammed preflop, I would have folded. But um, in this scenario, I... Bet 4,500 into a 16,000 pot on the flop, and he jammed for 34,000. 763. So easy, easy, easy call. Especially against someone with these stats. Even without someone with these stats, it's still an easy call because he could be jamming all of his draws here. And um, we're just getting like okay odds. We have to put in 30K to win a pot that's going to be what? 80K? So nice call. Nice call spot. Um, obvious. So Yoda here says it screams two overcards. I mean, he would def definitely check jam, I think, if he's good with all of his straight draws, all of his pairs. So I, I lose to a lot of hands here. The thing is, is that we are just getting decent odds to call, and like we're in fine shape against the jamming range. So he does have 10-9 uh, for gut shot, straight draw, two overcards, which is a perfectly fine hand to check jam with, and we win. That's good. All right. It's Kind of nitty guy playing 17 slash 12 raises under the gun to 6,000, and I have ace jack in the hijack seat. He, we are both playing about 60 big blinds deep, uh, 55 big blinds deep. Um, this is probably just a three bet. Calling's fine, folding's fine against someone with these stats. So I'd probably three better fold. I do call here though, and this is probably a bit of a mistake. I think ace jack is not good enough in this scenario to call. I think it's probably best off used as a bluff. So don't like this play. Again, you're going to make mistakes whenever you're multi-tabling. If this is a mistake, it's a minimal mistake, so it's like not that big of a deal. Flop comes ace-7-6. Under the gun bet 6,000 into 23,000. I have an easy call with the ace and the jack kicker. You don't want to raise here because if you raise and get called or re-raised, you are not loving it. Turns the jack. That's good. But then the opponent checks. That's bad. So board is ace-7-6 jack. I have ace jack. Now, I definitely want to just bet big. I want to stack the opponent if he does happen to have ace-king, ace-queen. So I want to be betting on the bigger side here. I, I understand he's going to have a whole lot of just unpaired hands at this point, like king-queen, king-10, queen-10, 10-9 maybe. He could have stuff like pocket kings. And he's going to fold all that if I bet big. But this is a scenario where when he does have ace-king or ace-queen, or perhaps even any ace, I just want to get money in the pot. So I'm going to bet big in this scenario. If I did have a hand like 9-8, I would definitely just call the flop, and I would definitely bet big on the turn. If I had like 10-9 of hearts, I would float the flop and then bet big on the turn. So we're going to be at least somewhat balanced here. I do go 24,000. Justin says he probably has queens. Realize you don't know what the opponent has. You always want to make sure you put your opponent on a range of hands, not exactly one hand. If I thought he had exactly queens, what would I do? Well, I definitely wouldn't bet big. That would be terrible, right? The thing is, is, yes, he has marginal made hands or unpaired hands way more often than he has ace-king or ace-queen specifically. But when he has ace-king or ace-queen specifically, I get paid off for a huge amount. Whereas whenever he has, um, like, the garbage hands, I, I'm just not going to get called. But I'm not going to get called for a big amount anyway if I do bet tiny. What else do we bet big here? I just laid it out. All the draws and all the obvious nut hands. He does fold. We don't get paid. That's fine. Jack-6 offsuit in the big blind. Small blind limps playing 40 big blinds deep. We check. Would you suggest ACR? Absolutely not. I would not suggest you play on any of the sites that are unlicensed and unregulated. 
Like I said, it's one of the best of the terrible options, I think. I would not be the least bit surprised if they closed tomorrow and took the money that I have in there. Wouldn't be surprised. That is the risk you take when you play on these sites, and that's okay. Do I think they're a well-run company? No. Would I ever vouch for them? No. Would I suggest them? No. No, no, no. That's the fear with making content like this, is that people think I'm somehow now vouching for this site that I would absolutely never, ever, 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 ever vouch for. I want to make that very clear. I would never, ever, ever say that this is a legitimate site to play on. However, I'm willing to gamble. A lot of people aren't willing to gamble. I realize a lot of you out there, when you're playing poker, you're playing for like a substantial amount of your money. And like, like say you have $5,000 in the bank. Would I tell you to put 500 on any of the sites that are unlicensed and unregulated? Like, no, that'd be absurd. Would I ever put $200,000 on these sites? Like, you know, 10% or 5% of my money? No, that'd be absurd. That'd be absurdly dumb. And I would never, ever, ever, ever do that. And I would not suggest you all do that either. But hey, if you want to gamble, this is um, one of the few games in town and it's probably one of the best of the bad options because they have games. The games, you know, the site only goes down once every four or five days, which is, you know, <laughs> better than some, I guess. Anyway. Small blind limps, I have jack six on queen six four, playing 30 big blinds deep. I think we probably just want to bet the flop small if he checks to me. But he bets small instead, which is fine. A very solid strategy is just limp a lot from the small blind and then bet minimum on every flop. So, you know, we're definitely not folding here. We call, turns to two. He bets half pot. At this point, we're not really loving our hand, but I think we have a pretty easy call again. There are lots of draws available on queen six four two, two diamonds. If we get a jack or a six, we're loving it. If it goes check, check on the river, we win a lot. So pretty easy call again. River's an ace, which is terrible. He bets three-fourths pot. Ugh, 30K into 40K. Um, so River's the ace. This is a spot where, like, this does kind of scream bluff E. But at the same time, my hand's pretty bad. He could just be betting with something like a queen. Seems like an easy fold to me at this point. Do you trust the random number generator on these re unregulated sites? I generally do trust the random number generator on these sites. Uh, like in terms of things they would cheat with, I don't think the random number generator is one of them. I think instead it's way more likely like players can see whole cards or something like that. Um, I mean, look like um, like on uh, Ultimate Bet, right? How are they cheating on Ultimate Bet back in the day? They were cheating on Ultimate Bet by seeing their opponent's cards. Like a few people had God Mode accounts where they could see what was come what people had. They didn't necessarily know it was coming. They didn't necessarily get good rivers or anything like that. They just knew what their opponents had. If you know that, that's all you really need to know. And that seems like a really easy thing to program. Um, that said, I don't think you're going to get straight up, like, obviously cheated on these sites. I, on the um, apps, I think you may straight up get obviously cheated. Like the, um, you know, Poker Bros, PPP, whatever, all those apps, I definitely think you could just straight up get cheated like that. I don't think it's going to happen on Bovada or ACR or Global Poker, I don't think. But, you know, what I think doesn't necessarily matter. I'm not a cybersecurity expert, right? Um, so anyway, on the river the opponent bets, I decided to call. I can tell you what made me call here. The reason I would call in this spot is because a decent amount of the draws miss. I don't block any of them. And also, guy has pretty loose aggressive stats. 32 slash 23 is pretty active. His steal percent's reasonably high. Three up percentage is at least reasonable, Right? All these, all these stats are pretty aggressive. So given he has pretty aggressive stats, I definitely don't mind the call. You may say, but isn't the ace scary? Well, yeah, exactly. The ace is scary. And think about what my hand looks like in this spot. It looks a whole lot like a six or a four, maybe a queen. Either way, all those hands are going to be pretty scary whenever this um, ace comes. And whenever he's betting this size, this definitely screams quite polarized. And if, it, if he's quite polarized, I think this is probably just going to be a call, even though you certainly don't love it. He didn't raise preflop, so it's harder for him to have an ace. Eh, it depends. I, I think a lot of people realize at this point they just want to limp a lot of hands from the small blind. And if they want to limp a lot of hands from the small blind, he could certainly have lots of aces. I mean, you saw me limp ace-king earlier, right? I mean, it's not like it's hard to have an ace if you're limping ace-king. What are we seeing these stats on? This this is called hold a manager. I definitely suggest you get hold a manager or a poker tracker or poker co-pilot or something like that. Oh, you can't see the heads up numbers. Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Let's see. Hmm. There you go. Thanks for pointing that out. It's important to know heads up display stats. Like I said, we don't have anything too fancy here, but nice, simple heads up display. Anyway, guy has ace jack on the river. Easy call. 
in my mind, and um, that's a okay. Notice that he did have exactly the hand that um, you know seems kind of unlikely. I don't know why he would raise. I don't know why he would bet the flop and the turn with this hand, which in theory should reduce that from his range. But whatever, this is fine. I'm fine with this call. Notice if he has a jack, he could easily just have like king jack or jack ten or something like that. Also, this call is particularly bad if he's going to be value betting a queen like this on the river. If he's value betting a queen, then this is a very easy fold. If he's going to be betting, if he's going to be checking a queen, though, this becomes a really easy call. Would you make a video based on opponent stats? I make videos based on opponent stats all the time at PokerCoaching.com. That's a lot of what the site is, is adjusting to what your opponent's doing correctly. I have loads and loads and loads of content on that. All right, now we're playing 20, what is this, 23 big, 25 big blinds deep. Folds around to the hijack seat. He makes it 10,000. That's two big blinds. I have three bet on the cutoff with King 10 offsuit. This is fine. Jammed on by a tiny stack that we already cover. Easy all in. That's fine. We win a flip. Can you explain how to use heads-up displays and poker trackers? I would tell you just to Google that. If you Google that, they're going to give you way better info than I am. As you see, I'm just using some basic heads-up display. This is nothing fancy. What are the stats? VPIP, preflop raise, steal, full big blind to steal, three bet, full big blind to three bet. I'm sorry, three bet and fold to three bet. Four bet, fold to four bet. Bet, fold, check raise, flop, turn and river. Flops on the left, rivers on the right. All right, pocket nines, easy raise. We get three bet by, is this the same loose aggressive guy? Maybe it is. Um, what do we do here? So in this scenario, we raised roughly 30 big blinds deep and then a generally loose aggressive guy three bet us. I think we probably just want to jam here. We have the best hand a lot. This guy is pretty aggressive. I mean, 8% three bet's not absurd or anything, um, but it's still like active enough. Like if this was instead this guy playing, you know, 39, 29, 18, I'd be, three, I'd be four bet jamming almost everything. Also notice that these four bet and folded four bet numbers aren't all that relevant because you just don't have a big sample. But anyway, I think this is an easy jam with the nines. I do jam and he folds, which is good. Ace king in the big blind, small blind raises to 2.5 big blinds, which is great. Usually when people raise to 2.5 big blinds, um, they, their range is pretty strong in the small blind because if they had a weaker hand, they would raise bigger or limp. If they had a, um, so usually when people make it 2.5 big blinds, they're basically trying to keep you in. If he's trying to keep me in, I'm actually pretty happy because I have ace king, right? So in this hand, I think we can either three bet small or jam. He's playing 25, he's playing 30 big blinds deep. I think I probably just want to three bet small here. Call's also acceptable, but I, I would be three betting this and just be happy to get my money in. 121 hands does not seem enough to rely on the three bet stat. Um, you have to realize the stats that become relevant the most quickly are preflop raise and VPIP, then steal percentage, full big blind to steal, then stuff like three bet fold to three bet, four bet fold to four bet. But the thing is, is like you have to realize that even though you can't rely on the stats heavily, they're still indicative of something, right? Like I can tell you, this guy here with 133 hands playing 39-29, 50% steal, 18% three bet, this guy's going to be absurd. Probably. He's probably going to be absurd, okay? I know that. This guy here playing 32-23, I know he's going to be a little bit looser than me. Not absurd, but a little bit looser than me. So he's a little bit looser than me. What does that mean, right? Um, we have instead, let's say this guy playing 11-8, no steal percentage, no three bet percentage, this guy's gonna be a nit, right? Even though it's only 73 hands. If that was like 20 hands for any of these stats, any of these players, I would heavily rely on it. Just like those very brief things will at least give me some idea of what the players are doing. How do you adjust against players with various stats? Well, you play a whole lot looser against the guy with 50% and a whole lot tighter against the guy with 20%. For what stack sides you know have no problem flipping? I realize you don't know you're flipping, that's the thing, right? Like right here with Ace King, if the guy jams on me, you don't love it. But still just an easy call. So anyway, he made it 20K. I made it 48K. In this scenario, you want to give him plenty of room to jam with his bluffs. If you raise um, bigger, like say I made it 70, now it, I have a little bit less fold equity. So here we are. He does call. Flop comes 10, 6, 5, which is not great. He checks. This is a fine spot to check or bet small. 73 hands is a small sample size. Obviously it is, but it's still indicative. That's the thing. Everyone wants to have clear, definitive reads. You're never going to have clear, definitive reads when you're playing tournaments, right? Unless you're playing like all day, every day against the same people. So you go off of what you have. Like when you go and you sit down and play live poker. 
I tell all my students this all the time. When I sit down and play live poker, I am making adjustments immediately before I've ever even played a hand with these people. How are we doing that? We have literally no hands. How are we making big adjustments? If you want a good side to play on, play on Party Poker, by the way. Party Poker has good games, and they're not going to steal your money. All right, so how do we make adjustments right off the bat? We can make reads based on how the player pool plays and also how people who look a specific way play. And that's important. Literally never played a hand with these people, never seen them before in my life, but I know how people who look like these people play. I know how people who act like these people play. So anyway, that's that. Strato says he liked the content. Well, good, thank you. If you're enjoying this, click like, click subscribe, share it with your friends, leave reviews, do whatever you can to let people know that you enjoy this content. Why would we bet small here? Because if I bet small and the opponent folds out, any hand that has, well, all hands have some equity against my hand, that's fine. Also, I would like to bet small with my bluffs. What are my bluffs here? Well, I can tell you here in this scenario, I'm actually going to have mostly very, very good hands. It's going to be like literal only the nuts when I three bet small preflop. Not that the opponent knows that. But if he does know that, um, then my bluffs are like exactly ace, king, and ace, queen. And I'm value betting aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens. Right? So you have a few bluffs. But not many. So that's a reason to bet small. I do let it go check, check, though. Turn goes check, check on a nine. River's an eight. He bets 52K. We're just going to fold, I think. Yeah, this is a fold. Um, queen jack gets there. King queen get king queen is a bluff, but I block it. Ace queen's a bluff, but I block it. Ace jack is a bluff, but I block it. So this is an easy fold. Queens, we raise it up. Someone's saying, oh, "Wow, you get a lot of good hands." Well, realize I've only shown about twelve hands out of the hundred eighty-eight we've played. We're not. Well, I'm not showing literally every hand. I'm showing only the ones the hold a manager tells me are relevant. There's a lot of other small pots where, like, I raise preflop. Someone calls and I bet the flop and they fold. All right. Here we raise to 20k, loose aggressive guy, playing, um, so we're playing 20 big blinds effective 3 bets, it's just an easy all in with queens, nothing to see there. Good to know the guy can 3 bet small and then fold to the jam. You definitely want to pay attention to sizing if you can. Like I said though, at this point, I don't know, actually I do know, we were still, I was still playing like 20 tables at a time. Um, I remember I was playing heads up and I was still playing 20 tables at a time, which is not ideal. I would not recommend that to anyone. This is one of the first games I played of the day. So, um... We, we, were, we were in the thick of it throughout this entire tournament. So this is just pure autopiloting. This is not, um, you know, super in-depth reads or anything. All right, so here we raise it up. Small blind and big blind call. We have pocket fives. Flop comes four, four, three. Small blind jams all in for three-fourths pot. If big blind called or raised, I would fold. But in this scenario, now we have a pretty easy call. Uh, yeah, we lose to random fours, but we beat almost everything. Some players will show up with something like pocket sevens here. But... Whatever. Easy call with the fives. He does have king, ten of hearts for a flush draw, and he gets a pair, so he wins. Under the gun jams for 12 big blinds. A tight player, ooh, playing 11 slash 8, and we have ace king in the hijack, or in the in the low jack seat. So in this scenario, ace king's all, pretty much always going to be a call in the spot, but... If this was like ace-queen offsuit, I would fold. Ace-queen suited is very close. Like pocket nines, I think I would fold. Pocket tens, I'm probably calling. So I'm calling really, really, really tight in this spot. So we do get it in. He shows up with ace-queen suited, as you see, right? I mean, so this is a good example where, like, how would you play if this was instead the 39-29 guy? Against the 39-29 guy, I'm calling way wider. Like sevens are better and like ace-jack offsuit, even from the early position. But against this tight guy, I think you do need to be super nitty. How do you concentrate on 20 tables at a time? Is this just ABC poker? You know, Jerry, I'm going to tell you something that Dave Benefield, one of the best poker players I know, told me a long time ago. I was struggling to beat 1020 No Limit online, and he was um, crushing it, playing, you know, 20 tables at a time. And I'm like, how are you beating the games? And he said, just play ABC poker. And I'm like, I've been playing ABC poker. And he's like, oh, well, my ABC poker is probably very different than your ABC poker which was kind of enlightening. That means that his autopilot was just a whole lot better than my autopilot. And I think a lot of people think, oh, just play weak, tight poker. That's good. But no, you have to get in there. You have to be battling a little bit and you have to go from there. Anyway, don't, don't be a nit. Should your strategy change when you're playing more tables? No, you should ideally strive to play well all the time. Don't play worse because you're playing more tables. If you get to the point where you can't pay attention at all, and you're just like screwing up left and right, you're playing too many tables. 
Are you worried about your own heads up stats and try to keep them looking balanced? No, I don't care about that at all. You want to play good poker, take advantage of whatever your opponents do wrong. All right, here we have a jam for eight big blinds. We have jacks on the button. We can either min re-raise or call. Either play is fine. It doesn't really matter in this scenario. We do get it all in three ways, and we spike against the big blinds kings, and we beat the other guy's ace-10, so that's good. So now, 218 hands out of 292 into this. What do we do? In this scenario, we're going to start playing a bunch of pots. So we have the big stack. We have 750k compared to everybody else's 300 or less. Presumably, we're on some kind of payout jump at this point. Obviously, the payout jumps weren't all that big in this tournament because it was a $150 tournament with only like 200 people. So it's not like it's any sort of absurd payouts. I think first place was like 5500 bucks or something. So nothing insane here. So we're just going to be playing normal. I min raise. I get jammed on for 10 big blinds from the button. Oh, it's cut off. Button jams 10 big blinds. Tw I'm sorry, 12 big blinds. No, 10 big blinds. Small blind calls 10 big blinds. We have ace four of clubs here. We have to put an eight to try to win a total of 30. So do I realize 25% equity in this scenario? Take a second, think about it. Notice there are no real payout implications for me because if I lose this hand, I still have a ton of chips. Is it possible to have my heads up display? Feel free to copy it. It's nothing fancy. VPIP preflop raise, steal, full big blind to steal, three bet, fold to three bet, four bet, fold to four bet, Continuation bet, fold, and check raise, flop, turn, and river. That's all it is. It's really nothing fancy. Make your own. It'll take like five minutes. All right. In this situation, I think we have to call. We don't love this. We're going to be behind the majority of the time, but we're going to have 25% equity, I think. So I think I like calling. And we're against ace queen offsuit, and we're against pocket king. So we were in terrible shape that time. A lot of people look at that and say, oh, we were in terrible shape. We should have folded. But you don't know what your opponents have, right? They could both have ace queen, or they could both have king jack, or pocket fours for all you know. So anyway, pretty easy call spot. Here we have the cutoff raising to three big blinds. I'm sorry, two big blinds. I'm in the small blind with the big stack. I think this is probably just a jam with king jack offsuit. Um, the alternative is to three bet small, but like three bet small to what? Like a hundred? Then if I get jammed on, I pretty much have to call off. That's not really what I want. The problem with jamming is that we're jamming into this big blind who has um, a lot of chips as well. So I'm basically jamming 30 big blinds effective, but I think that's still just going to be the best play. So anyway, we jam, get called, and we beat pocket eights. That's good. So we're losing some flips, winning some flips. Some of you keep asking, how do you... Uh, how do you win all these flips? You see, we're like 50-50, you know? It's important to realize. How do you make a HUD? It's easy. You go over to your Hold'em Manager. You click on HUD Settings, just like this. You go down here. You can you can click, uh, how do you make a new one? I don't know how to make a new one. Let's see. Somehow I made a new one. Just take another one and edit it, whatever. It doesn't matter. You go down here. And then you add the stats you want to add. It's like right here, this is what we have on the heads up display designer, okay? And then if you wanna add something new, you just click like new line. And then you go down here and you select the random stat you want. And you, you click it to the left and it adds it over here. Then you click apply. Then you go down here and select the one you wanna select, which I already done. And there it is. And notice there's like a load of heads up displays here too. It's like all fine. It's like nothing, you don't, you don't need anything all that fancy. I think people want some super advanced thing. I mean, super advanced things are great if you're like grinding all day, every day against the same people. But when you're playing against random opponents, you really just need to know these top four stats, in my opinion. You don't need anything fancy. Are you even paying much attention to heads-up displays? I rely heavily on the heads-up display. And I know most of the best players in the world also rely heavily on the heads-up display when playing many tables at a time. It is a... I mean, it's like... A, the, the alternative is to just try to play good GTO. But I don't think you want to just play good GTO. I think you want to exploit what your opponents do wrong, right? We must be down to the final three people already, so that's cool. Can you explain VPIP preflop raise? V is how many, what percentage of hands you're playing total when you voluntarily put money in the pot. So if you put money in the pot, what percentage of the time is that? I, or I'm sorry, P, VPI, what is, oh yes, yeah, so that's what VPIP is. Voluntarily put dollars in the pot. And um, that's what that is. P is preflop raise. What percentage of the time you're raising before the flop? All right. Anyway, ace queen suited. We're definitely going to raise. Get jammed on by the big stack. So I, I raise two big blinds. 30 big blind stack jams. I say the big stack. I'm actually a big stack. 
Um, this is a scenario where we have a pretty easy call. A lot of people may look at this and think, oh, I really don't want to flip right here for a lot of money. But you don't know you're flipping, right? So easy, 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 easy call. He has pocket fives, and we make a flush, but we somehow lose the flip. Given you rely heavily on the heads-up display, how are you adjusting to sites when there are no heads-up display? Just playing as GTO as I can on those sites. I mean, with no reads or with, like, no stats. I mean, whenever you start off playing a term, you just have no stats. I'm just playing GTO adjusting for the fact that the opponent will perhaps make some common errors. And there are a lot of common errors people make. I talk about that all the time to all of you. We've got to hurry up and wrap it up. I'm running out of time here. They capped me at an hour on Instagram. If you're on Instagram today... Ah, I can't see the table. Sorry, Instagram. I realize I can't even see what is being typed on Instagram. I told you all, go to youtube.com slash poker coaching to watch this. Um, all right, here we are. Small blind lamps. We're playing three-handed. We flop a straight and flush draw. King, queen, 10. Opponent jams all in. Oh, my God. Huh. So the opponent is basically putting me in in this scenario. So I have 230K into a pot that's going to be, what, five 550? So I have to put in 230 to win 550. So I need to win like 40-ish percent of the time. Well, I win 40% of the time with a straight flush draw. I think it's actually close. Like if I had the ace of clubs and like two of clubs, I'd be way more inclined to call here, I think. Because then he could have worse flush draws. Here, he very easily could just have the ace I flush draw and I'm in bad shape. Um, either way, I think it's just going to be a call. Yeah, it's just a call. It's unfortunate, but I think you got a call here. We make a straight, and uh, that's good. Wow. We And look, here's one of the examples where we were in terrible shape, as I tried to tell all of you. I don't, again, I don't remember this hand at all, but whenever you have a lower flush draw, um, it's very, very easy for you to be against the better flush draws or it's like pairs, right? So against pairs, you're flipping. Against better flush draws, you're in bad shape. Against worse flush draws, you're crushing them, but notice the jack and the eight both block a lot of the lower flush draws. So we get very lucky here. He had queen six of clubs. So he had middle pair, which crushes me, and he had a flush draw. So I had exactly a straight draw, a bad straight draw, and uh, we get there. You hate the jam by the queen six. Yeah, it's a terrible play by the opponent because I'm going to call off very appropriately. He just happened to have one of the few hands I was that he was in great shape against. So that's lucky for me. So we play a bunch of heads up. Here's a common spot. I mean, like, again, these are these small hands. I'm not really showing you all. Opponent limps small blind. I check jack eight offsuit. Flop comes queen six six. He checks. I bet one big blind and he folds, right? That kind of thing happens a lot. Lots and lots of common stuff. Notice in this scenario, um, we, we found ourselves in this spot where I have the middle stack. When you have the middle stack and the big stack is on your direct left and the short stack is on your right playing three-handed, um, in this scenario... Well, you need to be very, very tight when it comes to open raising. Will you ever stream your session? I streamed a ton of sessions a long time ago. They banned me from on Twitch from streaming because um, I streamed gambling games before that was allowed. I was playing No Limit Texas Hold'em, and they said, you cannot stream No Limit Texas Hold'em. That's a gambling game. But then a year later, Jason Somerville decided to stream the gambling game, and uh, Twitch decided that they were going to make him famous. So that was unlucky. <laughs> One year ahead. But no, I've streamed a decent amount. Just I'm not going to anymore because I it doesn't set up it doesn't line up with my life. What's the best course for online cash games? The Cash Game Masterclass at pokercoaching.com slash premium. Sit and goes, we don't have much on sit and goes because I think sit and goes are basically dead. Um, and there you can't really make a ton of money at them long term. You can't in the small stakes, but not the high stakes. I don't want to teach you all tons of skill to I don't want you, I don't want you all to spend a ton of time to um, get good at something that doesn't really have much of a future. And um, tournaments, I'm in the process of making it. All right, small blind limps. We have king, queen offsuit. I decided to jam here for 18 big blinds. I think raising small and then calling it off is also perfectly viable, but we just jam it in. He folds. It's fine. Small blind unfolding here. Notice with the big stack on my left, I just need to be kind of nitty. Here we raise the ace two, get jammed on. We have to fold. Ace two offsuit's a terrible calling hand. Terrible, terrible calling hand. As you see, I'm just kind of getting bad cards here. You all were saying, oh, do you ever get bad cards? Yes, we get bad cards. Remember, everybody gets the same cards in the long run. All right, we finally get a good hand, pocket kings. Um, in this scenario, I am definitely going to limp. You may say, why not jam? Aren't you afraid of getting outdrawn? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. 
Um, so we're going to limp here with our best hands and some of our marginal stuff that's going to limp and then fold. So this is a pretty easy limp. This is also a spot where the guy in the big blind is heavily incentivized to jam very wide, which is what he does. So this is an easy limp and then call it off. Pretty bad board for me, but he has the ace three offsuit, so that's good. Am I going to play Poker Master Series? Absolutely not. You have basically no win rate in those games. It's a site run by Mike McDonald called Poker Shares, and the highest ROI he thinks anyone's going to have is like 12%. So if the biggest winners in the game have a 12% ROI, why would I ever do play that? That makes literally no sense. You do not want to play games where you have a tiny ROI. I mean, I already told you all at the beginning of the stream, I'm going to be focusing on $50 to $500 buying games with big fields, because that's where you're going to have a high return on investment. Um, okay. Would I limp with queens? Yeah, I'd limp with. I'd probably limp there with tens and better and ace queen and better. Looking to limp and then call it off against the jam. Maybe even a little bit wider. All right, here we raise preflop, make a small bet on the flop, and win the pot. Get a walk. Notice here now I'm the big stack, so we're going to adjust substantially. Still not going to raise the worst hands though. Button limps. I check king four. Check check flop. Turns a five. We decide to bet pot. This is a spot where we can certainly bet our hand for value. It's very easy for the opponent to have a marginal made hand, and a lot of those have plenty of equity. So seems like a reasonable spot to bet kind of big. Here when this player raises the button and I have 5-4 clubs in the small blind, given he's a short stack making it 2.5 big blinds, I think I need to be pretty tight. So I did fold the 5-4 clubs there. Again, we're 20 tabling the whole time, so perhaps being a little bit nittier than I would like, but that's fine. Also, these players seem to be in there battling. Here we limp pocket fives from the small blind. Notice we're both playing 35 big blinds deep. You certainly could raise. I think that's acceptable. Flop comes eight, seven, three. Seems like a fine spot to make a min bet. He calls, turns an ace. We're just gonna check and hope to check down. I do the interesting play of betting minimum on the river. I'm not gonna get into this hand too much. That would take too long. And we're running out of time. I wanna show you all the final hands because they were a lot of fun. But this is a spot where I think we can bet minimum here, and he's going to call with some worse hands. He's probably rarely going to raise me, uh, but he did raise me this time, so we fold. Raise queen eight of hearts and get jams John for loads. This guy seems to be playing his big stack pretty well, which is a bit of a bummer. You really don't want a big stack player on your left who is um, playing their big stack decently well. That's going to just not be great for you because the guy's going to be raising you a ton, and you really don't want to get raised a ton. So that's going to just force me to be a little bit tight in these spots, especially when the third stack has um, only 10 big blinds and I have, I'm sitting over 30. In this scenario, you just have to be very snug. All right, button min raises I call from the big blind with ace five offsuit. Again, he's the big stack. I have 25 big blinds. Flop comes seven, six, four. So I have a straight draw. Check, check on the flop. Turns a jack. Check, check. Rivers a five. Check. He bets 97K, so he pots it. It's a pretty rough spot. It's probably just a fold, as reluctant as it is. I do fold, that's fine. Definitely a bad spot, but that's okay. We limp call queen six suited, check, check flop, check, check turn, check, check river with top pair. So here, okay, I limp small blind with queen six suited into the big sack, he raised, I called. When I have queen six suited, this hand flops well enough and the opponent is really going to be raising very frequently, so I can't really limp fold this. Um, so on the flop, I check, he checks on queen jack four, turns an eight, I check again to give him every opportunity to bluff. Check, check, rivers a four, I check and he bets three, four spot. Very easy call here. And he had queen three offsuit, so chop it up. Nine eight of spades, I raise it up, get a good flop. Flop comes queen nine eight against the short stack. He checks, I bet small, he jams, easy call. He has queen four for top pair. So now we are heads up and we are about even stacked. So we'll quickly go through these hands. Instagram tells me I have three minutes left. Um, small blind min raises, I call five, four clubs. We flop a straight draw, nine, three, two. It goes check, check. We turn a straight, that's good. We decide to bet, opponent calls. There is There are three hearts on the board. River's the fourth heart, I have no hearts. On the river, I think this is a pretty easy check call. In this scenario, we do lose to all the hearts, but also this guy is very bluff happy. So we definitely want to check and give him every opportunity to bluff. So we do check, he bets, and we have an easy call. You may say, are you calling with a straight on a four flush board? Aren't you crazy? And um, I mean, pot odds, right? Or am I good a third of the time? Yeah, I'm going to be good a third of the time. 
And uh, we are this time. So we have middle pair turned into a bluff, so that's fine. We raise small blind king eight, big blind calls. Flop comes king nine eight. He checks. We make a continuation bet. You want to bet a little bit bigger on these high card boards because if he has something, he's not going to be folding too often. He does call, turns to 10, which is terrible. So now a jack makes a straight, check, check. Rivers a queen, he bets two thirds pot. Um, Tough spot, tough spot. This is probably a fold. So funny enough, like the previous hand, we lose to a lot of hands with it's a call, a call, I think. And this spot, I think it's a fold because it's very easy for him to have a jack and it's very easy for him to have a queen. And it's also very easy for him to have a backdoor flush. Um, if he did have like 9-8, I don't think he'd even turn it into a bluff here because it's so easy for me to have something good. So I think this one's going to be a fold. I do fold. He raises pocket eights. I jam him. So now he's playing 25 big blinds deep. He min raises button. Pocket eights is definitely a good hand to jam. We do jam it in. He calls. And we lose to king jack suited. So we lose a flip heads up, which is a bit of a bummer. Let's fast forward a few more hands. We raise a seven suited. We're playing... Uh, 30 big blinds deep, 20, 25 big blinds deep, he calls. Ace, queen, jack, he checks. We are going to bet frequently here using a rather big size. He does call. That's good. Turns to five, he checks. I think we just need to go for value here. I think this is a solid three street value hand. Um, he does fold to the turn bet. Fast forward a few more hands. He, we raise eight, six of clubs on the button, he calls. Nine, seven, four. So we have open-ended straight draw. He checks. We bet. He does call, turns to two of clubs. So we have a straight draw and a flush draw. All right. Instagram's going to end on me soon. Sorry, Instagram. We're not done with this video yet. It's going to end when it ends. If you want to watch this and see it well, remember, check out youtube.com slash poker coaching. All right. So nine, seven, four, two, two clubs, two diamonds. At this point, if I bet, notice that if I bet any amount, he could very easily jam me. And if he jams me, that is quite terrible because I think I have to fold. So I really don't want to bet here. I think I just want to let it go check, check, and then use his hand as a bluff on the river if he checks to me. So I think I like a check if he does check. It does go check, check, so that's good. River's a two. He bets into me. So we're going to fold here. A bit of a bummer that, that we missed clearly. We had loads of outs, but that's fine. So, so far, heads up. I want to make it clear. We have lost a flip to win. We also just missed with all the outs in spot where we're going to get probably paid if we hit. So a little bit unlucky heads up, and that's okay. You're going to get unlucky heads up sometimes. He min raises flop preflop. I call with jack ten. Comes seven seven seven. We just have to fold to a bet. Ten to we fold preflop. Three to we fold preflop. King four. We min raise the button. He calls. Ace eight four. He checks. We bet small. This is definitely a spot where we want to bet frequently and small. So we are going to bet our bottom pair. He does call. Turns a queen, check, check. Rivers an ace, he bets. Um, pretty easy call here, I think. There are some busted draws he could have. There aren't a ton, but when he when we bet small on the flop, he's going to call us very, very frequently. And when he's going to call us very frequently, he's going to turn some of those unpaired hands into a bluff. He could obviously have a hand like queen 10, queen jack that are value betting here. He may not value bet an eight. If he's value betting an eight, then the call becomes pretty rough. But if he's not value betting an eight, I think it's a pretty easy call. I call a lot. And he did value bet an eight, so that's a bit of a bummer. Here he min raises button. We're going to call. Even off a shallow stack, we have 15 big blinds with 8-7 offsuit. Seems like an easy call. We flop trips. That's good. We check. He checks behind. Turns a four. All right, so now we need to figure out a way to get the stacks in. I definitely think betting's fine. It's pretty easy for him to have nothing, though. I guess he probably bet with nothing. So at this point, he probably has some sort of made hand, a marginal made hand, like ace high, maybe a over pair, maybe under pair that he didn't want to get jammed with. I mean, to be fair, if he bets with over pair and he gets jammed, it is what it is, right? Um, I think we can bet or check. I decided to check here, though. And I mean, checking is good if you think your opponent's going to be overly aggressive. If you think he's not going to be overly aggressive, you should probably just go ahead and bet here. So I, I would bet here the majority of the time. But again, the opponent's pretty loose, pretty aggressive. And so I want to give him every opportunity to bluff. River is a four. I'm sorry, turn goes check, check. River's an ace. I'm definitely going to check here to give him every opportunity to bet. If he has an ace, he's definitely going to value bet. He check, I check. He bets 72K. We have an easy shove. Our hand is incredibly underrepresented and we beat almost everything. He does call. 
and he has pocket aces. So I lose. So that's that. I think we cash for like 4,000 bucks or so. I have to go now though, because uh, I have to watch my child. My wife has work calls as well. So uh, such is life. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm sorry I had to rush through it. I thought I could get through it a little bit faster than I did, but you know how it goes when we're answering questions. Do I coach privately? Yes, send an email. Support at pokercoaching.com. Um, how many hands on your HUD do you need before you make a decision based on it? Not many. I make, um, I make decisions pretty quickly. I make adjustments pretty quickly. I have to go, though, before my wife gets mad at me. I hope you all have a great day today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, Click like, click subscribe, click share. Um, I'm going to be playing Sundays for half a day just to get some content for all of you and also to make sure I'm not getting overly rusty since we're all at home. So maybe we'll have some more of these. I had another deep finish in a um, bounty tournament this weekend. I think I cashed for like 7000 bucks in that too, but nothing great. Roughly broke even on the weekend. Like I said, we're investing maybe 15-ish K a day. Well, 15-ish K a day in the half, half day on Sunday. And um, that's that. Enjoy yourselves. Have fun. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Click like, click subscribe. Check out my site, pokercoaching.com. I work hard and teach you all there, so make sure you make good use of it. I'll talk to you all again on um, 